The hippies are falling apart. Celtic's treble hopes are gone. It's Hearts and Rangers that make it to the Scottish Cup final. Welcome, guys, to Fog Football. It's me, Son of Scotland 98, Son of Scotland TV. Call me what you want. I expected a lot of videos to be made over this weekend on the channel. Unfortunately, that's not happened. Main reason for that being is it was an, initially when we created this, it was supposed to be a co op channel, and the other guy's just pretty busy. So. I, I don't see the point of me making match reviews when I've already done them on my own channel. I don't really see the point of me, you know, doing a duplicate review on a different channel. So there's that. Plus, over the weekend, haven't exactly been feeling good. Had a massive fucking headache. Saturday's result, though, definitely helped a wee bit. But overall, it's been a, apart from the Hearts win, it's been a pretty shite weekend for me. Couldn't really care who won between Rangers and Celtic. Obviously, being a Hearts fan, Rangers, I deem, are the easier tie in the final. But three out of the four, two out of the three last previous years, we have lost to Celtic in the final. And I would have liked to have got a bit of revenge. So, you know, whatever. I'm happy to take on Rangers. It's a repeat from the 1998 final. And uh, in my opinion, this is a massive, massive game for both teams. If you look at the last decade, both of these teams, Rangers and Hearts, have won major domestic trophy between the well each should i say not between them they have one major trophy each not counting lower leagues like the championship because i'm not counting them but i just want to say that hearts won theirs first and won it by 27 points over rangers but anyway we'll not talk about that yeah so since in the last 10 years both of these teams have won one domestic trophy each hearts obviously won the scottish cup back in 2000 and oh fuck i can't even remember the the year I'm going to say 2012. It was 2012. Yes, it was 2012. And um, Rangers won their league title last year. So, I mean, apart from that, though, both of these teams haven't won nothing. Hearts have, like I mentioned, recently, the last three years, been in two finals, lost them both to Celtic. One of them should have definitely 100% won. Went to penalty shootouts, was leading in that. We all know the story. Celtic came back after two horrible penalties from us. One was from Aidan White. The other one was from... I want to say Liam Boyce, but I can't remember if I'm being completely honest, but they were both horrendous penalties. As for Rangers, um, we know they won the league last year comfortably. Uh, they did have that Scottish Cup final where they were leading against Hibs, and they somehow bottled that, and you have to be bad to lose a Cup final to Hibs. But yeah, no, I think this is a massive game for both teams, because I think both teams' record, like I said, over the past decade has been absolutely shocking. One trophy for each team just isn't enough. It's not enough for Hearts. Hearts should be... Com I don't think Hearts can realistically challenge for league titles. But unless, you know, there's a, a weird season or some mad shit goes down. But, I mean, I think Hearts should be at least trying to win a domestic cup each season. I don't think that's too far-fetched. I think Hearts should be competing to win at least a cup every season. Or at least getting into a final. At least challenge for the cups. And as for Rangers, I mean, when, you're the, when, it's, a two, when it's essentially a, a country that is focused around two teams, you know, when they have such a financial, um, you know, differential over the other teams, Rangers, every season, they're going for the league, you know, they should be winning cups, I'm not saying they should be winning trebles every season, but I would say a trophyless season for Rangers is a horrible season, I mean, if they're not winning the league, you expect them to win at least one of the cups, and they haven't done that over the past decade, so, like I said, it's massive for Rangers, it's massive for Hearts. Both of these teams have been underperforming. Both teams, though, have had their problems. Let's be real. It's not like over the past decade, both teams have been at full strength. Hearts have been relegated twice. We all know what happened to Rangers going back down to League 2. So, I don't know if it's a fair representation that each of these teams have only won one trophy. How differently would things have played out if Hearts were only relegated twice? If Rangers weren't sent down to League 2? You know, the team's... I guess wouldn't have been as weak as they were at some stages, and I guess they would have been better. But we don't know that. That's all ifs and buts. What we do know is both of these teams are now in a major final, and whoever wins between these two will claim another trophy to add to their trophy cabinet. Now, we'll talk quickly about the semi-finals. Hearts beat Hibs by two goals to one, and we were not the best team. It sucks to say, but I think Hearts were a little bit fortunate to get past Hibs. Uh, two great goals, though. Albeit Sims was kind of, you know, gifted the opener, but he, the finish was tremendous. He 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 planted that right into the corner. He was not giving Macy a chance to save it. And then Kingsley, we all seen what he done with the free kick, uh, short free kick between him and Boyce. Boyce lays it off, and Kingsley 
Uh, tremendous. I mean, best left foot in Scotland, 100%. You know, into the top-hand corner. At that stage, I thought Hearts were going to go in and win it comfortably. I'm thinking maybe 4 or 5-0. Didn't happen. Uh, Hibs equalised pretty... I mean, instantly it was pretty much after a mistake for Sibic. And then uh, we did have another chance to go ahead at half-time. Boys kind of missed a sitter. Should have made it 3-1. But second half, we didn't show up. Hibs were the most dominant team. Uh, the more dominant team, should I say. Uh, they got a man sent off, Newell got sent off, second yellow card, and still with 10 men, Hibs were the team that were looking more likely to get the next goal. So it, it was a bit concerning for Hearts. I'm glad it didn't go to extra time because even though we had a man advantage, I would not have been confident, but we managed to see it out, guys, a 2-1 victory. But I think the, the main talking point from that game is the injuries. Halkett getting taken off on a stretcher, which never looks good. And you have to worry, I mean, how long? Is how could going to be out for? Is that going to be a long term injury? People saying it might not be that bad, but if it wasn't that bad, would he have required a stretcher? So the fact he got stretchered off tells me that he's not going to be in training tomorrow. I know, I mean, I highly doubt it. So we'll have to wait and see. As for Rangers in their semi final, first half, I mean, first half I thought it was 50 50 with Celtic, but Rangers did have the better chances. Unfortunate not to go into the break 1 0 up after Lundstrom hit the post. Then in the second half, Celtic began to play a bit better. Celtic took the lead with a very fortunate goal. Arguably it wasn't in the free kick. And from the free kick, ball fell to Taylor. His shot deflected a passy. It gave John McLaughlin no chance and sneaked in at the near post. And then that was probably the only period when Celtic were one up. That was probably the only period where Celtic were the better team. Apart from that, it was more or less Rangers that were in control and you know were the better team for it. But the, the, the 15 minute period where Celtic were leading is when Celtic pr probably looked at their best and they could have doubled their lead. Carter Fickers on the shot just outside the 6 yard box, crashing off the crossbar. People saying he should have scored that, people saying he should have made that 2-0. You can't blame Carter Fickers for not winning that game, he was Celtic's best player today. And the fact that a defender was their best player might, might tell you all you need to know. Rangers did get an equaliser in our field, great ball for Connor Goldson, out to Tavernier, Tavernier crossed it in. Uh, Ruth stopped the cross and it, it almost perfectly laid it off into the path of um, of uh, Scotty Arfield who got brought on as a sub, he put it in. Then we go to extra time, again not a lot happened in extra time, it was more or less Rangers just on the front foot. But neither team creating like clear cut opportunities, you know there wasn't any many clear cut chances in the match and then it was finally Rangers, uh, Bassey on the left, crossed it in, Fashion Sakala claimed the goal but it wasn't actually him that got the last touch, it was Starfield. It turns out Starfield scored their own goal. And then Celtic trailing 2-1 for the last like what five minutes of extra time. Four minutes got added on. And, and they weren't good. They didn't look they didn't look like uh, equalizing if I'm being completely honest. And we like the dying seconds. Hart throw, pa Hart passes it short to Starfield. And Starfield could launch it up. But he then decides to play it short to Carter Fickers, who was injured in it, and Carter Fickers ended up losing the ball. So, I mean, what was that all about? Surely you have to punt it up, because previously, before they went a goal down, before they were 2-1 down, they were punting long balls up to Kyogo Furuhashi. So, why not, with in the dying seconds, why not chuck your big men up front and, you know, play up long balls to them, but instead they decided to play it short when they had about 10 seconds remaining. That made no sense to me. Rangers won. I thought Rangers deservedly won. They were the better team. And in the end, you know, they got the result that they deserved 2-1. Um, yeah, so that's it. Both semi-finals were 2-1. Um, going into the final, who do I fancy? Obviously, being a Hearts fan, I'm confident Hearts can win. I mean, Hearts have been playing great this season. Undoubtedly the third best team in Scotland. Rangers, they don't just have the Scottish Cup. In their mind, and the, but they've also got like a very faint chance of winning the league. I think the league's gone, but Rangers will obviously, you know, they will contest it till they can no longer mathematically win it. And they've also got the Europa League, so Rangers have definitely got more to play for. They will have a tougher schedule than us to the run up in the Scottish Cup. So you could argue maybe we will go into it slightly with better fitness, maybe a you know healthier squad to choose from, depending on if Rangers pick up injuries. But injuries is my main worry, guys, because I'm looking at it and I'm thinking. I do not want if so, we don't like first of all Suter. We don't know if Suter will be back for the Scottish Cup final. We don't know if Michael Smith will be back. We just got we just seen Halkett get stretched off. I mean, we could be looking at a back three for the Scottish Cup final of potentially and, and Kingsley get taken off injured as well. I don't think that was serious, but 
<laughs> you know, what if we're without those guys? We could be looking at like a back three of, I mean, who would we even have to play? Uh, potentially Civic, Moore, and fuck, you know, maybe we have to play Haring, I guess, in the back. So, uh, yeah, no, that would not be ideal. For me, that would that would be a, a pretty much a disaster. I think the strongest we could be would either be, like, be Cochrane on the left wing back. Uh, then you want Kingsley, Suter and Halkett as the back three. And then on the right, I, I do like Michael Smith, but I have been impressed with Atkinson as well. So, I mean, either or, I don't think would be a disaster. But what would be a disaster, in my opinion, is if we get to the Scottish Cup final and with, with no Michael Smith, with no Stephen Kingsley, with no Craig Halkett, with no John Suter. If that's the case... I'll be honest, I, I struggle to see how we can win because, you know, that would just be a... <laughs> we've been known for our defence, you know, we've got one of the best defences in the leagues and, and they're all key players to it. So uh, if those guys are missing, I, I do think we're in trouble, guys. But it's too early to make a prediction. It's too early to do any previews or stuff like that. We will have a closer idea, I think, near the time we get there, 21st of May. There's a lot of football to happen. That's over a month away. Uh, the form of both teams could be different by then. We don't know, but what we do know is it's either the Scottish Cup is going to be going home to Hearts or going to be going home to Rangers. So uh, that's it, guys. Let me know your opinions on the Scottish Cup semi-finals. And uh, yeah, I can't say any more than that, really. Both teams through. Should be a good game. Also, we qualified for Europa... Well, not Europa League. It's not guaranteed Europa League, but it's guaranteed European group stage football, which means we have a playoff for the Europa League. If we win that playoff, we go into the Europa League group stage. If we lose that playoff, we go into the Europa League conference group stage. So either way, Hearts will be playing group stage football next season. And you have to admit, guys, it is, it is partly, mostly down to Rangers. I mean, Rangers' performances over the past couple of seasons in Europe have been great. The boost at the coefficient, that has taken Scotland up. That has made us get more teams in Europe. It has made us enter into later stages in the qualifying sections for Europe. So I think we do need to be grateful for Rangers. And I think we do all need to start supporting Scottish teams in football. It wasn't that long ago. I mean, I remember five years ago where, you know, Scottish teams were getting pumped every round. We were entering at the first stage. Celtic had to win, you know, like eight, Celtic had to play eight matches, four ties. To just get into the Champions League group stage now, we're on the, we're borderline. We've got two teams in the Champions League, and we're borderline on the verge of one directly going into the group stage. So, I mean, it just shows you if Scottish teams perform, the whole country can rise, the whole country can improve, and the more Scottish teams in Europe, the better the Scottish league will get, the better the teams will get. It's just it's just better for Scottish football. So, I mean, this whole nonsense where we all want the all, we all want the Scottish teams to do shit in Europe. I don't understand that. Honestly, don't understand that. Surely, if you support a team in Scotland, you want the standard of Scottish football to be the best it can be because then that makes your team better. That, to me, makes perfect sense. But for some people, it's there's hatred or, or I don't want them to win or, or get them out. And I know it's the majority of old firm fans, but I have seen some old firm fans who, uh, you know, want other teams to win. I've even seen some Rangers fans that cheer on Celtic and Celtic fans cheer on Rangers. So, I mean, it's not everybody, but... Yeah, it's, it's, we need to start supporting our own teams in Europe. Anyway, guys, that is it. Let us know what you think down below in the comments, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.